Hi, my name is Tiago Duarte and welcome to another video tutorial here at Elibits. In today's video, I'm going to continue the Crash Course series and the video for today is a Crash Course on 3X Oscillator. So, let's start the tutorial. So this is the layout of 3X Oscillator. I think it's one of the most simple plugins that we have here in FL Studio, but also one of the most powerful. I really enjoy working with this because of its simplicity and it's very easy to use and you can achieve really good results with it. I usually main for creating bases. I, I love creating bases with this because it's so simple and so easy and the bases always sound good. So 3X Oscillator, as the name implies, is a plugin that has three oscillators. And we can see here we have one, two, and three. This is the three oscillators and those are the configurations for each oscillator. As you can see, we have oscillator one and we can select what type of wave we want for this oscillator. In this case, it's a sine wave. We can assign a square wave some this funky wave which I don't know the name because of this but uh, it resembles a square wave, a triangle wave and a sawtooth wave. We can also have white noise so let's go through each one of them so let's reduce the volume this by the way is the volume of the other oscillators so I'm just removing the volume from the oscillator 2 and 3 which means that we only have oscillator 1 running and if I now click on a key, you see that we have a pure sine wave. If I go here to the square wave, we have a square wave. So let me lower the, vol the volume a little bit. If we go to this one, it's a different tone of a square wave. Here is a triangle wave. And here is the sawtooth wave. And then here, this one is white noise. We can also do some really cool stuff with white noise here. And uh, we can invert the oscillator here. In this, in this case, it doesn't make too much sense, but uh, because we are not seeing anything related to this, but we could try some things, some things out. So let's say we want to use this one and let's use the same oscillator for both. And let's try to reduce the amplitude of the full of the 3x oscillator by inverting one of the oscillators in the same frequency and keeping the other normal. And now, if we start increasing the volume of the oscillator 2, what it is doing is that this one oscillator starts positive and then goes negative, and oscillator 2 starts negative and then goes positive. And since they have the same frequency, they will cancel each other. So that's that's something that you can do also. So you can invert the phase of the oscillator, which is quite handy. And here you can load your own shapes. So if you have a shape that you want to use in your own sounds, you can load them clicking here and it will open up a, a browser so that you can select the wave, shaper, wave shape that you want. So this is basically the oscillator settings in terms of shapes. And as you can see, it's pretty much the same for all the oscillators. So oscillator one, two and three have the same configurations. So it's very easy to remember. As soon as you understand for one, you will understand for the others. Then we have here the phase offset. The phase offset basically, it means that for instance, when you start a, a sound, it can start from zero, uh, let's say a sine wave. It will start from zero, go to negative and go to zero again. That will be a cycle of a sine wave. If you switch the phase, what will happen at is that instead of starting at zero, it can start, for instance, at um, 90 or 5 or 10 or whatever. So what this will do is shift the position, the starting point of the oscillator and basically you will not feel any difference like that. But if you have two oscillators with the same type of shape, in this case, a sine wave, and you have uh, at the same frequency, you see that 
we start to get some 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 different sounds and this is due to the the shape of the oscillator starting before or after the zero point as you can see it creates some some really strange sounds or strange behavior and this all because of the oscillator starting point then we have detune basically it detunes the sine wave as you can see here if we see it it has some kind of uh, oscillating nature it's giving some detune which is basically adding some variation to the sine wave and this is quite nice for instance if you want to create lead sounds let's see so you have here a very simple sine wave and you can give some flair to the or some taste let's say if that uh, that's something that i can use the word that i can use and as you can see we have now a more rich sound a different sound not just a a simple sine wave sound so it also gives some stereo width to the to the sound and in this case it's mono it's very simple and when we start using or adding some detune we start giving some <clears throat> some stereo field also to the wave and of course you can go up and you can also go down and to the extreme you see a very big effect so this again is the same for every single oscillator that's the beauty of 3x oscillator is that the parameters for each oscillator are always the same for each oscillator so as soon as you understand for one oscillator you will also understand for the others for the other oscillators which is quite nice then we have here the course knob and this knob serves to change the pitch of the sine wave or the uh, oscillator that we are working with so if we have here if we start lowering the the course it starts lowering the pitch and it goes in uh, in um, semitones and if i go to zero it's the lowest one i'm still clicking on the same c5 and if i start increasing again you see that I'm moving or I'm increasing the pitch of the oscillator and it you can go uh, so one two three four octaves which is also very handy and again the same for the other oscillators and then here we have the fine tune which we can use to go minus uh, 100 cents to plus 100 cents and then here we have the panning which is very simple we just can use it on one side or the other side again very simple plugin but very powerful when you start understanding each oscillator and the parameters to configure that oscillator and as you can see here we have again three oscillators and it's a very simple tool but uh, it's also a very nice tool to start sound design so if you are new to sound design this would be the first plugin that i would show to you because it's so simple it's one of the best plugins to start sound design so you start understanding about oscillators you start understanding about mixing the oscillator so that you can get a specific sound you can also apply some envelopes if you go here to the envelope section and you can apply envelope to the panning, to the volume, to the pitch. So you have a lot of functionality here that you can use to create your own sounds with this 3x oscillator. And uh, then there is this last knob here. And this knob is only for oscillator 2 and 3 because it's the volume knob. And oscillator 1 does not have a volume knob, which means that is always turned on. So the output, if we don't have any oscillator, it will be the output of oscillator 1. So oscillator 1 will always produce an output in this plugin. And you can then mix whatever amount you want with these two knobs. And you can mix oscillator 1 and oscillator 2.
Then we have here the amplitude modulation for the oscillator 3 only, and we can add AM or amplitude modulation to oscillator 3, and you can hear the difference. So this is a pure sine wave. This is a sine wave with amplitude modulation. We can change the phase randomizer here of the amplitude modulation, and uh, again, we can do whatever we want here. So let's see without the amplitude modulation, which is a nice sound. And we start adding some amplitude modulation. We see that we start adding some some character to the sound and uh, I strongly recommend you to start using this more and so for instance if you are creating a beat maybe instead of using a, a bass from another synth just try to create your own bass just try to come up with ideas to create basses maybe watch some tutorials and start creating your own basses because that will give you some head start into sound design or it will give you some lights into sound design and it could be easier for you to start learning and start implementing sound design in your own productions and that over the time will give you some return for sure believe me because i've i now can create pretty much any sound that i want it might be fast if it is a simple sound if it's a more complex sound maybe i need a little bit more time to tweak the parameters so that I get the sound that I want. But uh, believe me, you want to start with this plugin if you are new to sound design and then over the time start learning a little bit more of other more complex scenes. This is it guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful. It was a short video because again, Triax Oscillator is, is a very simple plugin and it's easy to explain and easy to understand. I hope you learned something from this video. If you are new here to this channel, consider subscribe and activate the notification so that you know when I upload new videos. We are almost reaching 7,000 subscribers if we didn't reach it already. I'm very happy with the numbers that we are getting at this channel and uh, I'm hopeful that we will reach 10,000 subscribers at the end of the year, if not sooner. So thank you for everyone that's been subscribing to the channel and is giving me support over the, these years that I've been doing these tutorials. And uh, thank you very much. And let's try to reach the 10K as fast as possible. And if you are new here to this channel and you want to support this channel, consider buying one of my products at dailybits.pt or become a premium or exclusive member and you will have access to exclusive tutorials about music production and also to the full videos of the tutorials that I do here. That's it guys, my name is Tiag Duarte and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.